All right, let's next talk about some of these screen tone options. So I'm gonna grab this F10 right here, we're gonna turn it on. Um, I mean, you do have these red, blue, and green filter options. So here's the green filter. You can add a little bit of green to your scene, uh, drop the opacity down, pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not gonna go into those. So let's go ahead and switch over here to our screen tones, which are down here. So we have screen tone dots, square, I'm sorry, pixels, square, dots, horizontal, and vertical. So if you start with pixels here, I'm gonna go ahead and crank this up to 100. And right away you can see that this kind of breaks up the entire image in a way that looks like an old Xerox or maybe like a really scribbly drawing. Uh, so you can play around with the blends mo the blend modes and the opacity to kind of get that kind of effect, like a, car like a charcoal drawing on a very rough paper. In fact, if you crank up this radius as well, uh, it'll kind of start diffusing your objects. You can kind of use this in really interesting ways. Again, you know, playing with your blend modes and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and put this back on replace. You do have a back color and a front color here. So if you choose red for your front color and then orange for your back color, you'll, you'll get this kind of result here. Uh, we'll go ahead and switch it back to black and white. And before we move on to the next one, let's just hit reset filter. And we'll go down here to screen tone squares. Oh, another thing you know what I want to do, I'm going to turn on my floor here and we'll do another BPR render. And I'm actually going to take this light here and we're going to move this around to the front so we can do this uh, cast shadow right along the back here. So here's screen tone square, and you're gonna see the very first option here is set to 20. If you crank this down, those squares are gonna get smaller. Uh, what you're gonna see when I move this up, it's basically big black squares on a white background, and wherever the underlying image, if I go ahead and toggle this off, where the underlying image is lighter, the squares get smaller, wherever it's darker, the squares get bigger. However, I can make the overall squares smaller, and in fact, you know, the smaller I get, it kinda of looks, again, like a low resolution monitor. However, when I go to a negative, you're gonna see it goes for, to a black background with white squares. So this is a really cool thing if you say, put this into your shadows to give you kind of a comic book look. In fact, if you go up here to the blend mode and change this over to multiply, you can play around with these values and kind of get the look that you're going for. Uh, we also do have modifiers in here, so you can tell it, you can, you know the squares are getting bigger and smaller depending on the value that's underneath them. Uh, so in fact, if we go over here to the shadow and you make that back down to zero, so it's over the entire object. And let's put these squares back to a positive number and change this back to replace. So here we're kind of getting this effect. If we go into the modifiers here and we say use constant size, uh, it's going to make all of the squares the exact same size regardless of the value that's underneath them. So if we put those back into the shadows, we make them a little bit smaller. Now they're all gonna be the same size square. So if that looks a little bit better to you, then uh, feel free to do that. Put this back to replace. We'll make these squares a little bit bigger. We'll go back into modifiers. And when we have use constant size on, we can actually change the constant size as well. And that just means making those borders between the squares a little bit thicker. And always remember, you can actually go to the negative value and now it'll be a black background with white squares or a white background with black squares. Of course, if you use turn use constant size off, that functionality disappears. You can also make the outer transparent. So wherever it's white, it'll turn transparent. You can see the underlying shadows beneath it or you can make the inner, uh, inner transparent as well, or you can do both and kind of gets rid of the effect altogether. So I'd suggest using just one of those. You can also use uh, match color intensity and that will take the underlying value and make those squares kind of match the intensity of the under under underlying value. So again, we'll make these squares a little bit smaller here and you can see whatever's underneath it is dictating the value of the squares that it's drawing. Now, if we reset this filter and we switch down here to screen tone dots, Kind of the same thing, only instead of squares, we get dots. So again, we can throw those into the shadows. We can drop these down so it's black with white. We can change that blend mode to multiply. And go in here to mod modifiers, we can say use constant size. Let's go make those a bit smaller here. We can drop this opacity down a bit. And again, if you wanna blur that border, you can actually um, kind of fudge that border a little bit, have it bleed a little bit, and you can actually blur that as well kind of give you an overpainted look. So kind of play with these settings to kind of dial in that exact comic book look that you want. Now I do like the overall look of this image here. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, keep this one around, but I'm gonna go turn the screen dots off and I'm gonna add another one here. And in this one, let's go ahead and check out the screen tone horizontal and vertical. So with horizontal turned on, uh, again, with no you know, telling it to go in the shadows or anything, you can tell it to go to the shadows and get to a cool look. Uh, but if you go over the entire image, you're gonna see it gives you a very Again, low res monitor type look. And if you change these down, 
you know, you get a very, very, very cool effects. This looks like something off a computer screen from the early 90s or something like that. Very, very cool. Uh, of course, if you make them very big like this, and again, you still you have a back color and a front color. So again, here's a back color. Here's a front color. You can get pretty cool effects using that. And you have modifiers as well. Again, you can say use constant size and all the lines will stay the same size. And then you can make the lines of different sizes like this. So if you wanted to just, just have lines and just have them in your shadows, you could do that as well. And again, outer transparent or inner transparent and match color intensity functionality as well. But if we take that out of the shadows and we just have these drawn over and we'll go ahead and make those a little bit bigger. Um, I'm gonna add another one here and we're gonna change this filter to screen tone vertical. We'll go ahead and make those a little bit bigger. And now if we go in here to our blend mode and we do multiply, we can multiply that vertical and the horizontal here. And this is that look we can get. So a lot of really cool stuff you can do with those screen tones. But we can go ahead and turn these two off. And here we have, uh, we turn our screen dots back on. We have a very comic book look.